Oh, got a scratch, a scratch, a scratch. Sorry, I had like a random scratch right before I hit record. How's it going, everybody? Look at our podcast here. Lash Roush, your host. This podcast is sponsored by LashRoushMedia.com. Photo, video, digital media production. Today we are discussing The Last of Us. What is this? Episode 8, When We Are In Need. So I would have expected you to have watched it. Episode 8 and all the previous amazing episodes of The Last of Us. Just want to clarify that I haven't been covering the last couple episodes. Mostly because... What more do you got to say? Almost every episode has been a transcendent emotional banger. It is just a roller coaster of emotions. I would say the only, uh, it's not even a gripe, but I would say that it is a little bit of a a predictable outcome of some of the episodes of them showing, just uh, introducing us to a new character, kind of, you know, pulling us in emotionally. And then at the end, just ripping our heart out. I'd say that was a little bit of um, a pattern post Bill and Frank, episode five, episode six, and then episode seven um, leads us in episode, it leads us into episode eight. And so we, um, we have episode eight here. Ellie leaves Joel, who is still recovering to hunt for food after shooting a deer she tracks the wounded animal and encounters a preacher david and his fellow hunter james is played by troy baker who is the voice of joel from the last of us game does a great job doing both live action and voiceover uh, obviously and and uh i think he does the motion capture as well for joel and uh, the last of us I'm going to go ahead and go through the whole synopsis of the episode, uh, what happened. She trades her deer for penicillin. David reveals the man who stabbed stabbed Joel was a member of his group. Ellie leaves to treat Joel. The next day, she discovers David and his men have followed her to seek vengeance on Joel. So we'll go ahead and cover the little bit last right there. Um, Ellie... The, the performance by Bella Ramsey has been transcendent. I was so surprised just the amount of emotional depth that she's able to carry, considering this is this is basically her showcase. Um, and, you know, we, we've seen Pedro Pascal. We know he can do he, he almost is almost too good. You know, we've seen him in everything. Last couple episodes, he's been kind of on the descent and not able to kind of communicate uh, with Ellie. So kind of at the end of this episode, we really see where he's coming from emotionally. So the next day she she discovers um, Ellie, she discovers David and his men have followed her to seek vengeance on Joel. She flees to draw them away, but is captured. There is a awesome horse scene where She's just riding away. She's like, hey, motherfuckers, bam. She's like, doesn't give a fuck. And just the spunkiness of Ellie is something I've just really enjoyed uh, uh, watching over the, the progression of the few, last few episodes. <clears throat> so it's a. Uh, it's kind of ironic, James, the, like I said, Troy Baker is the one that shoots her off of the horse. He's getting ready to take her out, but David's like, blam, not today. I'm going to need another child bride day. You're like, wait, what? And so he's like, take the horse, take the horse and travel with it like six miles back to camp. Two of you men. I think the bald move did the, uh, did the math on it. Most horses weigh around uh like 1400 pounds or something like that so for two men carrying like 700 pounds worth of horse just of like horse lard just like it'd be it'd be a bitch it'd be terrible but i guess it'd be better than being fucking cannibals let's go (laughs) 
At David's camp, he reveals he's been feeding his group human flesh, which was just as just as much of a surprise for me as uh, a viewer that has you know, not played the game. Although I got to disclose that I have been able to get the original Last of Us game for PS5. If you're a PS PlayStation Plus member, which I think it's like 60 bucks a year or something like that, you get free games every single month. On top of that, you get, uh, you know, awesome games like The Last of Us. And so I was like, this is a complete deal because the average game costs $80. So they... They had that on there, Last of Us. So go check that out if you haven't played the game yet. I have it waiting for me. I want to watch the first season of The Last of Us before playing the game, see what the difference is. Um, so after uh, after that's revealed that these are a group of cannibals, the the show does open with like this preacher David, you know, very much um, ruling with an iron fist. And apparently he's reciting some Bible verses that are some of the big bangers, you know, it might be hell now, but if you come with me, it won't be hell later type thing. I'm Jewish. I don't really know what's going on there. I'm sorry. Um, no disrespect. Just don't know. Um, so uh, David, the guy that plays David, I don't have his name up in front of me right now, um, but he was great. Uh, I was david 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 i'm gonna find it don't worry about it oh david last of us actor oh come on man all right so anyways <clears throat> i'm gonna find that before we finish this last one uh, I should know this by now. I'm sorry. I don't have this all. Found it. Uh, Scott Shepard. Scott Shepard. He's from X-Men Dark Phoenix, Side Effects 2013, Jason Bourne 2016, Bridge of Spies 2015. I was thoroughly, thoroughly surprised about Scott Shepard's performance. I haven't seen him a performance like this just emotionally just like it feels like it happened in waves. It's like he kind of pulls you in emotionally, but then he also is like ready to backhand the fuck out of you, which he did to one of the ladies that whose husbands died in the group and they're eating him apparently. So the, the writing in this is so, um, so sharp. And a lot of it is shown and not told. So we're almost shown, you know, how depraved and how scared, all of these people are we don't know exactly why all this is going on though that's the best thing so i um was very impressed with uh scott shepherd's performance and um continuing on meanwhile as uh as ellie is taken by david's men and, and they're sort of starting to look for joel she woke joel up a little bit after stabbing the penicillin directly in the stomach i was like yee i was like this is a little cringy i don't think that's where you stick the penicillin i think it could have gone anywhere but she sticks him twice with penicillin and apparently just boost joel right back up he's like yee i'm back baby like straight level up and so <laughs> he um he goes straight batman i mean uh the joel the david's men are like looking around and like dun, 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 dun. and then you have joel like yes yeah! and like gets his ass and then takes down everybody and it is like brutal and so everyone's a lot of people have been saying that joel hasn't been brutal enough compared to the game where he's been bashing people's heads in for the past 70 hours or however long you pay the game before he even gets to here but i think that we've been purposely not shown joel's brutality until this scene because we need to see him go full batman you know uh you know where is she you know that type of thing you know um so i definitely think that it was holding back on that i've never seen the whole um the the whole get up of point on the map and if you don't point in the right place where your buddy points then you're both gonna get scratched and gonna remove that kneecap it's like damn just like straight uh don't give a yuck so 
Joel awakens and tortures some of David's men into telling him Ellie's whereabouts. Um, David and James attempt to kill Ellie, but she kills James and escapes. She's like, there, there's a scene between David and Ellie where she, he's like, I can see something in you, which I, I the, throughout this entire season, older people have been telling Ellie that I see something in you, even though she's like been kind of an asshole to them. She's like, they're all like, I see something in you. She's like, fuck you. It's just, they're like, yeah, I, I, I like the spunkiness or something like that. You know, it's just like, that means you're going to be a great leader. I'm like, I'm like, wait, what? So I'm uh I'm a little bit like, what are y'all seeing in Ellie that I'm not? Or are y'all is this all just like a ploy to get them to for her to join their group of some sort? And so she does a good job. Bella Ramsey does amazing face acting in this uh in this episode anything from having the worried face about her father figure of joel whether he's not or not going to make it to having to act like an older person when she has the gun she's like you better get the fuck down everybody she's got like she changes the tone of her voice i love the the the, the acting she's doing all the way from being attacked by uh david and james and stuff like that i was like this is a showcase performance all the way to when she's actually attacked by David at the end. Um, and, and then have has to run into the arms of Joel. It's, it's a showcase. It's a showcase piece. It's phenomenal. So David and James attempt to kill Ellie, but she kills James and escapes. Uh, David hunts her down, but she overpowers him and kills him with a meat cleaver. I, I, I had a small feeling that, I think it was around 2017, 2018, where it, we no longer have the damsel in distress trope. We don't have the quote unquote woman in the worst position of her life and she has to be saved by the man. I think uh, there's a, an amazing and brutal scene in Barry season four that kind of has something to do with that. Um, but it is like sometimes that it's almost more difficult to watch that way because it's like you have to watch her, them the person actually struggle out of it as opposed to having them being saved by like a deus ex joel or something like that so uh i did like that ellie kills david and and david does go from kind of like a grounded person to a straight up evil villain and it's almost each scene that you think he's kind of trying to be disarming. He's almost getting more evil by the minute. You just don't even know it. He's like, this isn't even my final form. You know, he's like, I like it when you fight back. And it's like, Jesus, dude, you're just like not even concerned about the entire steak shop that is going to go to waste. Where the fact that where apparently all are chopping up and preparing and marinating and whatever, cooking up bodies in the back. It's like, I guess y'all don't give a shit about the restaurant over here. He's too worried about having a, uh, a, underage brided uh young bride or whatever it's just like oh sicko and so joel finds a traumatized ellie outside the cult cult's burning community center and confronts her we kind of don't really see what happens to the rest of the cult it's just basically david and james are you know are taken down and all the big uh bigger men that are part of the society that didn't seem to <clears throat> a lot of people didn't seem to agree in the community about what they were doing but it was like they just always just like very depraved a couple things this last little part with ellie and joel coming together i was i felt like i was eating an apple full i was like oh god here come the tears again like i, I was like i feel like i've been extra extra sensitive this last like nine weeks because of the old bill and frank shit it's just got me on edge just ready to fucking just lose my shit so i'm trying to slowly recover from that but so uh what else? Uh, the sound design in this episode, I thought was very good. The sound design of how, how scary and eerie it was to have everyone eating at the same time, but saying nothing. And all you hear is like the forks and the bowls and the, you know, all the utensils hitting the bowl because everyone's starving, but no one really wants to talk about what's really going on. I'm curious about how many people actually know they're eating uh, human meat versus not it seems that he says not everyone knows and that they didn't really want to start doing that which you know there's some sort of sympathy to that they like you got to understand that they didn't want to do this but it's just like on a sick 
perverted level that this guy is just fucked up beyond re- reason, you know, from being a math teacher to going to a preacher to being just the ultimate evil. It's just like, you usually, you haven't even seen his final form. The burning lodge cult community center at the, be- at the end was a very, uh, uh, stunning look at just, uh, what visually it was a very interesting background i feel like we don't really get that kind of uh look anymore without getting like a big movie um and it's kind of crazy if you think about it each individually these episodes are probably worth the cost of what horror movies were cost 20 years ago really cheap ones so maybe even 30 years ago but still they're putting so much money into these and it's uh it definitely shows though I heard that they shot this in Calgary in the middle of February. It's got to be just asininely cold there. I, I couldn't even imagine. So we have one more episode of The Last of Us. I, like I said, I haven't played the game at all yet. I'm going to wait till the entire first season goes through so I can start playing. I'm very excited to play the game. I've been super impressed by the season. I know everyone that all the, critics that had gotten screeners before the season had aired had said it's 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 golden all the way through so i have no qualms about how this last episode is going to be it's going to be directed by ali abasi uh sorry ali ali abasi which is the same director of eight nine and uh i think that yeah he's just he's wrapping up the last two episodes as the director Obviously, Greg, Greg Mason's on both of the last two episodes, and we have Neil Druckmann joining for the writing of the last episode as well. So from March 12th, it's going to come out. We only have two more days until the last episode comes out. It's going to be sad not having our Ellie and Joel action anymore uh, every Sunday to, to kind of have a, a, a thing to kind of go to, but, uh, you know, uh, some content to consume, but we're, we're hopping on the Mandalorian train at this point. So we're not done with Pedro Pascal yet. Still got a few couple more weeks with him. So let me know what you thought about the review. Let me know what you thought about the episode nine of, or sorry, sorry, episode eight of the last of us. Let me know what, uh, you think is going to happen in episode nine. Do you think we're going to go according to, you know, people that have not played the game people that are not spoiled you know kind of keep in mind for those people um if you're going to give any reviews or anything uh regarding predictions on that level so yeah thank you for listening watching look at our podcast be sure to subscribe on youtube we need to get up to over a thousand subscribers and we'll be able to monetize our 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 videos and we'll start making some moolah um apple itunes uh five stars you know what to do it keeps us high in the ranks. We need to get uh, 250 ratings on Rotten Tomatoes of over five stars to, to get on Rotten Tomatoes. So be sure to do that. Uh, again, YouTube, Twitch, you know what to do. Take it easy. I'm trying to think, was it? I didn't really have any catchy music this song. But, uh... The one episode was like, take on me, take on me.